Okay, hey everybody. It's uh, Brett here, Crypto Mastery class, and give you guys a minute to uh, get logged in. I'm back in town and back from the uh, Bitcoin conference. I uh, had a great conference there. Lots of great things happening there. We're going to release some video soon. We had a video. I brought my video guy down. And uh, we got these cool hats in, by the way. If you can see this, it uh, looks like it might be backwards, but it's for our M3 crypto program. And um, but this class is uh, Crypto Mastery, right? So we're going to be looking at uh, our indicators. And of course, uh, if you're watching this on the uh, YouTube, you can find out more about this uh, at CryptoMastery.online. So we've got these uh, indicators that we use to time these markets and have been doing very well with that over the past uh, two years and continue to refine these. So uh, let's just kind of dive in and uh, let's see. Okay, so but Bitcoin, uh, so Bitcoin had a nice little rally today. Not sure why that's pushing higher. Just pull up the chart here quickly and right up to resistance. So we can't get too excited. We're right up to the 50 day and 21 day moving average on the daily basis and it rejected there so it does look like it's trying to put in a bottom but these are going to act as resistance we're going to look at the uh, 200 weekly in a moment i just wanted to get through some news uh the reason for the pump higher says bitcoin jumps to key price resistance as hong kong opens up crypto trading for retail and uh so you know hong kong is sort of the opposite invisible arm of china which keeps uh, banning bitcoin whereas it allows hong kong certain to uh, in lower restrictions and allowances. So the crypto short-term outlook may depend on the ongoing US debt, uh, US debt ceiling trauma, which we're going to talk about as well over here with Janet Yellen. And um, so uh, this uh, just these are the, there's not a lot of news today. This is a kind of a um, exhaustion rally, maybe, you know, these sellers are just kind of getting down to that support level in that region that I just showed right down this 26,500 level, you know, I've been calling for the need to come down and retest these lower levels around 25.3, which was key resistance all through here and then even farther back uh, in this region. So I, I do think we head lower. I think the 25.3 area is where we'll really want to find some support, but it's possible that we hold support here at just 26,000 uh 600 level and not really you know for any reason other than that held as support back over here and we are kind of putting in this head and shoulders pattern although it's uh, it's a bit of a sloppy one you have um it's almost like there's two shoulders shoulder head to shoulder and so this is the area we're watching right here so this is the uh what we want to kind of keep an eye on and um i have some thoughts on that we'll get to that with our indicators we are seeing our trend strength indicator breaking back up uh, above uh, 20. So uh, that's an interesting one to see uh, if that can hold and, um, you know, above that 20 line at the end of today. And and so let's just uh, send a quick message. Yeah, so, so that's what we're watching for. And this is encouraging, though, for at least a short-term bounce. And then we'll want to see our signal lines, of course, green. So, you know, our signals are showing that there is a bounce in play. I will feel better if we can see this uh, a bell form on the other indicator because we did have the ERI back here and it's possible we get another one right in here. So if all four of our indicators line up, then we're good to go for a bounce. The uh, only caveat there is this somewhat, somewhat strong resistance back in here. You know, we had this um, bottoming level. We have the 21 and 50 day moving average. And of course the debt ceiling is looming. We have a week to go. On that debt ceiling, do we default? Will they print money? And they each time in the past they have, but it may be one of these boy cried wolf scenarios where everyone says, well, they're going to have to raise the debt ceiling. And um, maybe they don't. And uh, maybe they don't initially. Here's my here's where I, you know, you develop a certain contrary and spidey sense in these markets. So this seems like a false sense of security to me, right? In this level. <clears throat> so Let's say, for example, that they they have they default for a day, they miss it somehow, and all kind of panic ensues, and the markets tank, and they quick drop down to this twenty five three level, and then they bounce hard, and we get this overreaction knee jerk, and then we push up higher, and so that is certainly a scenario that I want to leave open for you guys, and uh, so let's kind of unpack this a little bit more. So basically, this push higher is uh, Hong Kong saying that retail investors could trade digital assets from June 1st. Interesting 
timing there because that is the exact day of our debt ceiling deadline. So I wonder why suddenly Hong Kong is coming out to do this. Let's see if it talks about this. So basically, retail investors uh, took a swell with track record, registered changes, bar from providing stable coin. Uh, lots of uh, word salad here. Um, it, it's certainly a, an interesting uh, timing, but it's not clear why they that would they would do that. I don't know how they would benefit from us, you know, our debt ceiling deadline, and then suddenly they reopen crypto. I don't know. It makes no sense to me. Here's a chart. It's not mine, but also showing this kind of head and shoulders area. And tactically, the head and shoulders breakdown. We'll look at that as well, which again points down lower. So, you know, I would be very cautious in going long here. I don't want us to jump in, even though our signals are starting to look pretty good. I would want to wait to see if all four of them line up, and then I would feel confident, at least in a short-term bounce. And uh, let's see. So I think that's all we can unpack here on uh, this uh, chart. So we'll certainly, or this news article, we'll certainly keep digging a bit. So uh, let's see, <clears throat> pardon me, the hedge fund manager, Greg Foss, criticism, latest news, top trending. Um, checking out this um, new uh, news aggregator at Pro at Cointelegraph. They've got pretty good editorials. And uh, so just searching for relevant news, not a whole lot going on today uh, so coinbase files a pandemic petition no idea what that means in response to the sec well i mean i can assume that they are pushing back on the sec's latest filings of course sec filed the well a wells act with uh, coinbase back in march and interestingly enough the c-level execs at coinbase have been dumping coinbase coins all the way back since uh, December of 2021. Certainly executives sell on a regular basis, but I was noticing because of some software, we use a uh, sharp uptick on the C-level execs, the CFO, uh, Brian Anderson himself, selling a lot of Coinbase uh, leading into the uh, Wells petition. So the um, that was the first shoe to drop. I find that somewhat fishy, but it, it's technically legal because they file it publicly at any rate. Uh, as a response to that, SEC uh, or Coinbase was uh, suing the SEC regarding this, trying to prevent possibly further action. And so the Coinbase is filing this mandamus petition. Never heard of this term before, but uh, let's see. SEC chooses to deny it. Well, basically, SEC, uh, Coinbase is trying to force the hand of the SEC to make a decision on digital asset regulation. There's not, there's no clarity in the marketplace. And that's really what we're all waiting for. And it certainly seems that the SEC is deliberately dragging their feet so that they can't get stuck into a line in the sand and then they have to approve something. They, they're still trying to leave that as very vague and Coinbase leading the charge to try to force the SEC to come out and do that. So uh, let's see, the Digital Asset Summit, of course, coming out. That's going to be actually next year. So forget that. I, uh, I'm looking forward to that because I'm in Washington, D.C. But uh, let's see, anything worth reading here? Uh, SEC does not deny its current enforcement campaign marks significant departure. Prior views. So they're claiming that they're you know, authority to bring enforcement actions against the industry indefinitely for violations of new standards never disclosed. So this is what Coinbase is alleging. And this is kind of what I was saying, that uh, they want to hide the rules, but still enforce the rules. Makes no sense at all. Um, so at any rate, um, SEC given seven days. So this is good. The court rules SEC has seven days to respond. So we have we have dual fireworks potentially lined up here for June 1st, because seven days from today, right around the end of May and going into that June 1st meeting. And uh, now let's see, Coin. the court could also order SEC to explain its delay to date. Okay, I misread that. I thought maybe they could uh, a petition that, to push this decision farther out. Now let's see, Coinbase's APA argument is that, uh, let's see, effectively, not formally, administrative procedure. We're going down a rabbit hole here, and I don't think we want to dive into that because... Uh, as you have heard me say over and over again, show me the charts and I'll tell you the news. So we, uh, the charts are selling. We're getting a little bit of a bounce, but I don't know that this is going to sustain. Um, this just in, well, there's some news about Binance commingling mingling funds at Silvergate. Uh, I don't think that that uh, is something we want to dive into here. But um, what happened? As, so the S XRP lawsuit, let's just see what's coming out on that. That just literally dropped. XRP lawsuit, SEC may have just bitten off more than it can chew as Ripple Eye's very big win in case. 
you know, I've been hearing rumors about a, a Ripple win for over a year now, and nothing is yet materialized. So let's see. Um, but it's starting to sound like the uh, it, it may land in the favor of Ripple. Now, I, I doubt they're going to come out and say, we were wrong, Ripple wins. There will, there will be some vague sort of wrist slapping and uh it you know what's going to matter most is what the markets see as as the outcome so um let's see there's some more news around here on uh, ripple there but let's see pundit made observations on monday 21st after tweeting and um, that the sec may have bitten off more than it can chew that um is not really new news but gensler's sec attempts to count digital assets securities face unexpected opposition in its past statements internal documents okay so you know we're not really getting any closer it is just pure speculation on that but worth noting that that is potentially coming out and there will be some resolution someday so what could lead a big rally in crypto let's just sort of take the other side of this uh there's not great news in uh in the overall markets but if ripple were to win hands down and uh embarrass the sec that's going to set a precedent and a positive one throughout the crypto industry and environment so that could certainly cause a rally how high do we go i don't know we're going to look at that i have been saying if we can break above and hold of above 32,000, I think we go to 48K, 50K area, and I'll show you why in this video, so stay tuned. If you are watching the replay and you like the content, please make sure and like the content below. Hit subscribe. We'll be doing some live, some more live uh, videos here in the coming months, and I've got some exciting new things to tell you guys about. So hopefully this is interesting to you, because a lot of this you're not going to hear everywhere else, and uh, I'm a bit contrarian to what other people uh, say and uh, also do videos on the contrarian dude channel a couple times a month so some good stuff there if you want to check that out so ripple expands into the institutional crypto custody market following 250 million dollar acquisition of medico you know i don't care about anything in this headline except for this you guys 250 million dollar acquisition um you remember the early early internet when we really didn't know who the players were going to be the bubble burst and out of the ashes rose the big flyers like Amazon and Netflix, et cetera, and, and Google, of course. So Google, what are they famous for is just buying and gobbling up other companies. So we haven't seen that M&A phase yet of crypto. So this is a good sign when we see the bigger companies starting to make acquisitions. And I'll speculate to you as well that I would start watching that because the companies that start making acquisitions early, uh, A, they have a revenue model, so they have money to make ac acquisitions. And B, that's a sign of any future emerging leader. So keep that in mind. Uh, we're about to announce a, uh, this is the first time you'll hear it. Here's a quick hint. You're, we're about to announce a new service that's going to focus on uh, emerging markets that uh, could have potentially massive gains. And so anyway, not going to talk about that right now, but keep an eye on that for companies that are starting to make acquisitions for that same reason. XRP could very well be the big winner uh, in the future, and uh, we just don't know. So let's uh, keep going here, and I'm going to speed things up a bit. I want to get to, to Janet uh, Yellen. So messaging, she's saying, of course, that what Bitcoiners have known and been saying for years, the banking system is in trouble. And uh, the U.S. default uh, may default on its debt here in June and the bank um, consolidations on the horizon. You know, what does this mean for you? You can't trust the bankers. Uh, you know, just a quick aside. Uh, somebody over the weekend recommended watching the show Ozark on Netflix. And so I started that last night and I uh, won't go into the plot. But at one point, the guy goes into the bank to withdraw. He calls the bank, says, I need to withdraw close to eight million dollars. And of course, he gets there and, and the feds are there and saying, are you in duress? You nobody needs this much money. And he essentially says, if you don't give me the money, uh, I'm going to go into the lobby and say that I can't get my money out and cause the biggest bank run you've ever seen. So what do they do? They give him the money because the banks don't want to have a bank run. And we are in that scenario. If if that starts to happen, uh, that is uh, it's going to be a big problem. So. You know, you want to make sure your funds are in FDIC insured banks and uh, and, and you're aware of this. Be careful of this. So what uh, we're going to talk about a scenario in a minute and show you my trifecta 
potentiality for Bitcoin running to 100,000 sooner than later. I'm not saying that's likely, but the triple, the factor, the, the perfect storm of a bank runs, a big run on the banks, and also de-dollarization and hyperinflation, as well as the third factor, which I'm going to tell you about in a minute, because I've got a chart here. I'll give you a quick glimpse of this. Uh, which one is it here? All that buildup um, there. So we'll get to that in a minute. Yeah. And the third factor is if we start QE printing to pay down our own debt. So let's see. Uh, let me close this down. And so banks are turmoil. I'm not going to play the video, uh, but uh, that's that's kind of the big story this week and what everybody is watching and waiting for. All right. Uh, quick aside, by the way, um, at the Bitcoin conference, uh, I was down a yeah, video playing by accident here. <clears throat> I was down at the Bitcoin conference, had the opportunity to interview the president of Lieberland. Uh, if you're not familiar with Lieberland, it is a new country that is physically located over by Croatia, I believe. And uh, But it doesn't matter because you can become a citizen of Lieberland, which is essentially Serbia. Serbia and Croatia, it's right in the middle here, uh, but you don't need to go there. It is based on the book, the sovereign individual where you can be a citizen and get dual citizenship without having to live there. And so I should I have a, a, the pin. The president of Lieberland gave me a pin that looks just like this. And I'm going to an event tonight here in Washington, D.C. at uh, Brock Pierce's school. Those of you uh, who know Brock Pierce, early uh, adopter, uh, Bitcoin, Bitcoin billionaire, uh, Brock will be there. I'll be there uh, helping to produce a show uh, and video. I have a video team to interview some things of the president of Lieberland. So it's definitely interesting to know about. And uh, dual citizenship is uh, something that will be uh, coming out with. So anyway, not an endorsement in any way. I just thought it was interesting. And uh, so I'm, I was looking for the, the flyer for the event tonight. Uh, I will try to pull that up here. I'm sure it's not all exciting, but um. Uh, to you guys, but I'll have pictures for next week. And uh, we had, I did interview the president of Lieberland at the show. So once that drops, uh, we'll get that out to you guys. Okay. So let's dive into the charts, shall we? And um, just again, if you haven't seen these before, if you're watching the replay on the YouTube channel, these are the are crypto mastery indicators. I've been trading for 25 years. These are the best I've ever used. Those of you that are here watching live and, and using these in our various services, including the M3 Active Trader service that um, uh, we will be talking about here this week. By the way, Myreen, if you're listening, could you grab me the link for that? Uh, if, if anyone was watching this replay, where they can sign up for the live training this Thursday at 8 p.m. on the rescue and recovery plan that, that we're going to be sharing for getting more of your crypto back uh, for this uh, season and the uh, bull run, which I believe has begun. Uh, but in terms of these indicators here specifically, you can find out more at CryptoMastery.online. So this, these are our North Star. They're better than anything out there I've used, uh, better than the ciphers and the other uh, things you might find in the algos, et cetera. So we have, uh, we've discovered something that really works. And this is a simple description of what those look like. So you can find out more. Also some custom reviews at Kristen, uh, CryptoMastery.online. All right, wanted to get that out of the way. And as soon as we have that um, link, I'll share that with you for a live training this week. So a couple quick things that, you know, we do kind of follow the DXY here, pushing up as I was speculating it would last week, DXY pushing up. And uh, in retro, correspondingly, you know, we've, we've seen, you know, the, the inverse correlation has somewhat been, uh, I won't say severed, it hasn't been as strong. Usually DXY pushes up, Bitcoin prices come down. So we had the DXY push up here on this um, daily basis and we're hitting resistance here, but we didn't see a real pullback in Bitcoin. So it's decoupling a little bit. What I am watching closely is, does this does the DXY get back above this 103 level? And if it does, then we could see some lower lows on crypto. And that would be indicative of going down to that 25,003 level. Now, if the DXY starts dropping, then I would expect to see a rally in Bitcoin or a bounce of some magnitude. Take a look at the monthly chart here. You know, I think we do continue down on May. We unpack this a little bit more on tomorrow's class, the active trader class. 
and uh, so but just uh, we had four months of upward momentum on bitcoin here pushing up here to that 32k level which i did diagram out as a likely resistance level so i think may we kind of we kind of go sideways maybe even drift down a bit and uh, again, I would like to I would like to see us come down and retest that twenty five thousand three hundred level because it was such a strong and important level in the past, both resistance. And now that we've flipped it, we need to test it as support. All right. So this chart here, uh, this is our I want to show this because these are our indicators showing that I believe we have put it in the bottom. I need uh the which one is it here this one so essentially looking at this going all the way back in time let me open this up our trend strength indicator and our early reversal indicator this is on the uh, logarithmic mode here but uh these indicators have only fired three times in the past so we had it here the early reversal indicator that's our flagship secondly here third time here and now and each time was the bottom of the market so the reason that I believe that a bottom is in is that we did get this indicator here and confirmed with our trend strength indicator going from green and above 20 here and here. So I do believe the bottom is in. Could we come down and retest the bottom? We certainly could. And uh, we've seen that happen in the past where it's come back in. Let me pull up an RSI. Again, we'll, um, we'll unpack this more in our active trader class tomorrow. But uh, this showing that the RSI can come down and uh, money flow coming down. So so with that, let's keep going and just sort of look at, again, these are some of these charts that uh, we unpack in more detail in that class. So um, let's see, in terms of the scenario where I said we could go to Bitcoin 100,000, had an interesting debate over the weekend at the bitcoin conference and one cycle trader said he thought this is no way this is going to happen and uh, there was another professional trader saying what's your target for the top of the next cycle and i said right around two hundred thousand, and uh he he agreed with uh with that so at this point uh, i don't know um this is based on fibonacci projections i've got a 210k as the top of the next cycle when do we get there? I don't know, but this is the scenario where we could go to Bitcoin 100,000 if these three seed things happen. And I have that tentatively uh, in August of this year. If we see a massive rise, I do think we see a big push higher in June and July. And it, the that could become an explosive move. Again, these this is a bars pattern copy of what happened back in 2021, 2019, 2021. And so that's where I get this uh, bars pattern, maneuvered it a little bit, massaged it a little bit, but it does look like it's been following this. So if you look at where I put it up here on trading view, uh, we it I predicted or this pattern predicted it would pull back down into this red line. And if I hit the play button here, it's doing, doing exactly that. See, that's pulled back down into this rising red line here, which is, just to uh, confirm that, is the, uh, it, what is the 21 week moving average, this red line. And so that's strong support pulling back to 21 week moving average. So we'll see what happens in the coming weeks. You know, this would also indicate uh, we sort of go sideways in May. And then we see a little bit push higher end of May. And then we get into June, it really takes off. If this plays out again, I have noticed and others have noticed fractal patterns in these markets that replay and recycle. And uh, so keep that in mind. We'll kind of keep an eye on that. Okay. So uh, with that here, let's take a look at uh, the Bitcoin weekly chart here. This is ETH actually. So let's take a look at ETH. So ETH is holding above its 21 and 50 week moving average. This is encouraging. And if we look at our indicators, we did have a bearish early reversal indicator confirming with the trend strength indicator here. So, uh, you know, I did suggest that we come back down, uh, but we can also see that we have some support in this level. So because the uh, what do we have here? Uh, we're above the 21 and 50 week. That's a double support. I think we could very likely bounce back higher for another run up. Also, the stochastics RSI coming down here in this range where it could easily uh, bounce out of this uh, lower range there. So uh, keep that in mind. Uh, Ethereum looking stronger to me uh, than Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin, uh, however, is uh, is just breaking down on a weekly basis from its uh, TSI. So, so this is where we have some contrasting information on the daily basis. We have potentially a bullish setup with the um, 
you know, the TSI turning green, but I, I don't know. It, it has to close above here today for me to think it's bullish and they continue higher. Uh, just some other news. Let's see. Peter Brandt makes astonishing Bitcoin. I already looked at that. There's nothing to see there. And um, so, so this, there are analysts. I know who this analyst is. I think he's wrong predicting that Bitcoin comes down to 12,000. Uh, I don't see that. Uh, I don't see that. This is a, uh, a, a air quotes prominent um, analyst, but um, yeah, I, I don't think he's right. Uh, at least not in the short term. Anything can happen later in the year. Uh, but uh, I think before that happens, I do think we push higher to 48,000, 50,000. And uh, my invalidation point is if on the weekly basis, we start breaking down below, you want to keep an eye on this 21 and 50 week moving average, the uh, exponential moving average, and see if it can hold here when you don't really want to see that hold. If we start breaking below that, then we have some trouble. And of course, if we want to look at this, there is a potential head and shoulders forming on uh, the weekly basis. And so it's at this point, we just don't know how this thing plays out. If it starts to lose that 21 week and 50 week moving average EMA, then uh, then we are potentially looking at uh, another head and shoulders breakdown here. Uh, if we were to kind of speculate what that could look like and wanted to get an idea, if this were the head and that were the neckline, a break below there puts us to... So this is a scenario that you certainly could see taking us down to 17,000, but still holding the lows. That would be... Uh, the scenario, the worst case scenario, in my opinion, because uh, I, I think that uh, this lows are likely in based on our indicators and also the hash ribbon indicators have been, have been suggesting that this was the low, the low is in. So um, uh, we'll keep that in mind here and I'll just put a, an alert here that 17,000 is my as my bottom worst case scenario right here, maybe, you know, these round numbers, we say 17,000 and uh, we'll see what happens. But right here in the short term, I think we could, well, let's see. This is not a terribly bullish scenario. The bull most bullish thing we see here is this ERI indicator. These three are turning green. Our early reversal indicator fired back here. Our trend strength indicator, which has been very good at catching bounces when it breaks back above 20. This is a proprietary indicator. We saw a nice bounce here. We saw a nice bounce in here. This is a smaller one. So if we get a bounce, I think it's a small short-lived bounce. And then the weekly time frame continues to take it lower as we've been looking at here. So that's what I'm seeing uh, based on our indicators, you guys. Uh, so anyway, uh, let's see. Not much to see there. Uh, we do look at specific coins uh, tomorrow on our M3 program. And let's see. To... I just can message my uh, VA here. Myrene, if you're listening, I just need the link to the uh, Thursday live training. Okay, so um, here's, uh, so it, in terms of everything else, what I'd also want to see is our trend indicator. If we get a bell on our daily, we get, uh, that's when we know we have more follow through potential. A key and a bell, a bell is our buy signal because we usually see about seven days of follow through and then our take profit signal is this bag of money. All right, so um, what we can also do here, and usually we'll do on Crypto Mastery, is jump into the uh, what's moving here in trading view. So uh, why don't we go ahead and do that? And I'll just skim down on my watch list and see if I can see anything. I'm going to kill the camera, though, just briefly. So I'm sure that you can see all of the uh, charts. And uh, let's see, stop the video here. Okay. And uh, thanks for the feedback, guys. Great show. Thanks, Alex. Uh, all right, so let's take a look at a couple of the things we can look at. Solana here, not much to see in with Solana. Our indicators are still all red. And uh, one thing I would like to do is look at the total market cap. Total market cap's looking similar to uh, to this. Uh, and by the way, the, the link for the training this week is moonstream.io slash free training. Okay, so... I'll just uh, click on that. If you want to join us live, if many of you might be watching this on the replay of the, uh, let me just turn the video on again, on the uh, replay here on the uh, YouTube channel. So if you'd like to join us uh, in for this 2023 emergency crypto rescue plan, uh, we've got some exciting new information for you and to tell you about. And uh, the link for that is 
as moonstream.io slash free training. And you can sign up for that for free. Uh, no prior experience required. Uh, we've got a lot, ton of people that come through this and we do it periodically. And that's going to be live. That's in two days. Uh, in seven hours from now, depending on when you're seeing this, but it's your emergency crypto rescue plan for anyone wanting to recover losses. Certainly, a lot of us lost money last year, uh, lost more than we gained, uh, unless you were shorting. I was doing some shorting last year, but most people lost uh, money. And um, so if you want to get back on track and get in front of the next bull run and invest with an edge and position yourself now, this is for you. So just go to moonstream.io slash free training and I uh, can join us for this. You can just register on that page there. Okay. Um, all right. So let's see. I will stop the video again. I don't want it to cover anything on the charts. And so the total mar market cap, very important that um, we are holding here, by the way. I'll just turn off our indicators for a second and I'll go to a five day chart. But do uh, you see how the total market cap had broken out into a new upward trend here? out of the downtrend we've been in since 2021. And uh, this uh, this segment of it is really important that we can hold here, hold the line at this bottom area, which we are technically doing, but just barely. Uh, we need to see the total market cap hold above a trillion dollars. Otherwise, we do have trouble looming in this market. So uh, I want to see this coming up. I'm encouraged to see this coming up above the bottom line here so that we should see a bounce follow through. Uh, but we need to see that close at the end of the day. And uh, But it is looking bullish for a bounce. We've got our signal line turning green here, and we have our trend indicator putting in the key. And so tomorrow, what we want to see is that a bell confirms. Our bell is our buy. And so when we see all these line up, then uh, those are our marching orders to get into the market. For the short term, at least, as swing traders, that's our edge. And I'll be doing a special uh, tr class on swing trading secrets and sort of the advantages of swing trading, which is multi-day, multi-week. And, uh, you know, and that's how the hit, getting base hits in volatile times, you know, versus trying to uh, shoot for the fences, which is dangerous. So um, not seeing a whole lot of activity here. Otherwise, you know, we could, uh, we do look at Bitcoin dominance, Ethereum dominance. We'll look at that in tomorrow's class. And uh, we can discuss it a bit on the uh, Thursday free training. All right. So uh, let, let's do this. I'm going to switch gears here and just go over to the uh, crypto screener and see if there are any big movers here that we want to take a look at. And typically uh, like to filter out some of these that we're not looking at uh, some of the, uh, you know, the beam coins and things like that. So uh, if there's anything you guys want to look at, do you have any any uh, coins you'd like to for me to pull up here? And uh, we can uh, do that. Let me just resize this a little bit and maybe pull up a new chart. I'll turn off all of the uh, diagrams so it's cleaner to see. And uh, we can take a look at this. But what do we see here? I'll just short it, uh, sort it by, not short it. Um, percentage change. I really want to filter this first, but... Um, uh, get rid of some of the uh, the noise here. So, to um, the uh, to manually sort this, uh, they they seem to change this interface often, and it's uh, kind of hard to find the uh, the symbols here. But I'm just checking the chat, see what you guys want them to see. And um, there, it's over to the right. That's why I was not seeing it. Change percentages, exchange. Uh, I don't need the high, low price. The technical rating we do, volume is good on the exchanges. Uh, we want to sort that. I will do that more too. So on the exchanges, et cetera, we don't want all of these because that's where all the noise is coming from. And uh, sorry, butterfingers here. Hold on to you guys. Uh, not every exchange we want to do. Binance US, Binance we can leave. And I'll just do like Coinbase generally. That's That covers most of them. Maybe KuCoin. And uh, click on that and that'll do it. Okay, so now we have a less messy uh, sorted list here. So strong buy, let's get back to the strong buys. Okay, so we have uh, Kava. I'm not sure, I haven't looked at Kava in... No, that's that's a new ICO. Not familiar with that. iOS, Veed. Let's see. We've got up 114%. Here's an interesting one. Veed. 
VimWorld, um, you know, these are pennies, but uh, that's a nice looking chart just based on the 21 day, 50 day. This is on KuCoin though. You want to be careful with these. These are largely margin pumped. So the pump has largely already happened and maybe it goes sideways. Best time to buy these are bouncing off that 21 day moving average. EMA, not financial advice, just my experience. Uh, GNO, GNO looks interesting. We've got all green on the radar. If you guys are looking for some short-term opportunities, let's take a look at this. We had an early reversal indicator back here, and we have our trends. We had our trend strength strength indicator go green, and above twenty back in here, all the way back here actually. So, had you been watching this, we've been a nice play. But what we're seeing is a new bell. And uh, on this 21 day EMA, this is something that I it's starting to look like a rocket. It's a it's a coin. It's a setup that I've discovered. We talk about it in our active trader class. And so this is maybe one to put on your radar. I love it when they sort of ride the 21 day EMA with the 50 day below it because your stop loss, your downside is minimized. I would put stops below the 50 day and keep the targets up uh, you know higher here or if you want to have a tight stop just put it below the 21 day but below the 50 gives you that safety net uh anyway so um an entry point would be well debatable in there but that's that's an interesting looking chart so you may want to keep an eye on gno uh render now render we've been following i believe the, let's see turkish lira i thought renders an ai coin so it looks like there's a different render uh ignore Let's see. Is that the same render? Let's see. I'll show you a glimpse at our AI coin token list. Yeah, right. Render USD is what we follow, not the Turkish lira. But uh, so render's been on a tear, and uh, bit this overbought though. Wouldn't be chasing at render here. Would was a great trade down in here when our early reversal indicator triggered. Then the TSI went green, signal and bell. You see how these line up. And again, if you want to learn more about these syndicators, CryptoMastery.online. So uh, let's show, jump back over here. We've got some, um, and then the uh, other pairs. I don't know why we're on a uh, pairing of Turkish Lira, but most of these are USDT. Uh, we have uh, ETH, G, G, BP, the British Pound, um, ETH, RUB, ETH, Euro. I mean, um, it's interesting, actually. ETH looking stronger on the other currencies versus the US dollar. So if we uh, come back into uh, this, uh, it's the wrong list there, and I pull up ETH USD, that's looking stronger on the other pairs. Interesting. Maybe that's because the DXY. Uh, hard to say. That's hard to unpack. So ETH ETH uh, Euro is quite a bit higher uh, in terms of a above the twenty one day EMA. I'm not sure what to read from that at the moment. Anyway, so we have. Um, Let's see, a lot of these are ETH, ONT. Uh, I've traded ONT before. Interesting, interesting pattern here on ONT. It's back above its 50 day moving average. We've got all green on the radar. And what are our, just a little bit overbought though on the uh, trend strength indicator? Would have wanted to get it down into here. So, uh, with your watch list, you know, a lot of times once they move, the move is in. Uh, here's render USTT. <clears throat> yeah, so that's an AI token. Uh, let's see, Wild here. Uh, Wild, I'm not familiar with. Wilder World looks interesting. A bit overbought on the trend strength indicator, though. And we had a bearish ERI yesterday, early reversal indicator, but that did not confirm. We want to see these confirm with the TSI coming back, back below here and going red. So that would be the sign that it would be time to go short on that Wild. So sometimes what we like to do, and uh, why don't we do that, I'm not seeing a whole lot here in the strong buy category and the ones that have have already kind of run their course so i like to look and resort here for strong sell because often those are pulling back to uh, areas of support and it's a good time to kind of keep them on our radar to uh look for bounce opportunities um zill is one i'm used to but it, this is different zill view floki um yeah not a whole lot going on with these let's see if we recognize any of those Sol ETH, interesting. And uh, let's see, I didn't have the full chart loaded for some reason. Apologies. Let's see. Sol ETH is one I would keep an eye on, but I'd want to see it back above the 50 day. Uh, Eagle here. Now, Eagle was my recommendation back in December of 2021. It went up 161% before 
that rolled over. That's why we invented the radar because the radar went all red and that would have been an early indication to get out of it. But unfortunately, uh, Eagle not looking great here. It's, um, this is not bullish. These are topping tails pushing it down. Uh, red on the radar, red on the TSI, so not looking good there. What I'm hoping to find here, here's Metis we haven't looked at in a while. Just super low volume, red on the radar. So what we're specifically looking for is something that's come back down and is starting to oscillate back up or looks like it could back up higher. But of course, these markets are not uh, in, they're not bullish at the moment. And so you know, be careful trying to find these uh, bottom, bottom fishing on these. So uh, there's not a whole lot left here to see. Uh, Alex says once these AI coins start running back up, some are back to 300% potential earnings. Yeah, that's a good point, Alex. And uh, certainly we um, cover that more in the Active Trader class tomorrow with the uh, AI basket of coins that we have identified there. Uh, QNT is, so this is kind of the scenario I'm looking for where it's oversold. You know, if you start seeing early reversal indicators, I know it's hard to unpack all this but but as these go down the trend is your friend and until it isn't so this these you know when these come up and start having these topping tails and they rejecting at the 21 and 50 day as it goes lower and lower this is bearish obviously so we'd want to see this bottoming out and see this turning back up above 20 eri tsi signal and bell that's our four kings and we're not seeing we're not seeing anything close to that. So let's jump back out of here. And, and maybe on instead of the strong sell, we want to just see what's anything interesting on the uh, sell side. It was not as uh, maybe not as bludgeoned. Uniswap, haven't looked at Uniswap in a while. I do like to stick towards quality projects, but again, all red on the radar. We have a bearish ERI. This, all, this looks like a good short, actually. Bearish early reversal indicator. And then we have our trend strength indicator starting you know heading down in red okay so i think this is going to continue lower on uniswap so um you know unfortunately that was a high flyer and had a lot of potential back in the bull run strax is one that we have uh, traded in our moonstream uh so service so this is interesting here but bearish uh, bearish and bearish on the other indicators so you know unfortunately i can't look i can't find bullish scenarios in all different uh, market conditions i think the sentiment is for sure cautious and bearish because of the debt ceiling coming up let's take a look at serum uh, srm is one of still a project i'd love to see revived but our our nemesis i almost called him our old friend but our nemesis uh, sandbank mcfried of course uh, uh this is one of their projects so it's been decimated uh, along with um uh, along with Solana, right? Because back in here, uh, FTX imploded and uh, Serum has been just continuing to go lower. I, I Hopefully the project survives. It's a derivatives exchange based on the Solana network. But, um, you know, here it's certainly not bullish at the moment. Uh, well, I'd like taking that back, actually. Um, it, it's looking more bullish than anything else we've looked at today. Back above 20. We have green on the signal line, and we just would want to see another bell, but it's uh, it's trying to find a bottom. Solana's so Solana's got like a long way to go as on a rebuilding path. But hey, look if you liked, uh, sorry, Serum, but uh, which is going to run in conjunction with Solana to some extent. But um, you know, I I had it up. I owned some all through here in 2021, and. Uh, held on to it right till right back in here finally sold some back in here just to, to you don't know how long it's going to go how low it's going to go which could be zero which is sad but um you know, the indicators will give us a good head start on when these things are bottoming and ready to go higher uh the sun will shine again everyone and uh, we're just being patient uh matic aussie dollar uh not looking very favorable there metis we looked at so you guys there's not much more we can really look at here today uh, unless you guys have anything that you'd like to look at, just put it in the chat and I can pull that up. But, uh, you know, we are in a waiting game at this moment. And um, with the as markets here, so let me get this out of the way. We have this little bounce here on Bitcoin. 
Uh, we had the early reversal indicator here, waiting for TSI to confirm. Now, is the, if this confirms today, and I mean by 8 o'clock Eastern, maybe it's 7 Eastern now with the daylight saving times, but we want to see this go to the next candle and stay. And if this is still green, I would be cautiously adding to positions. And let's say, you know, as Bitcoin is our North Star, whether you're buying in, you know, Ethereum or Bitcoin or Phantom Coin or any of those, we want to see this as our North Star. And then I would add to that position potentially uh, tomorrow or later today and tomorrow if this turns into a bell. I think we have a tradable opportunity here, but also want to see this midline go green. And if you're following our trader checklist, uh, that would be something useful uh, to have. And let me just ask... Uh, Myrene, if we have a page to get the mastery success checklist, how many of you would like to have the success checklist? I will pull it up and show it to you. But uh, that is something that what we talk about, the more of these things that check off, like a green line in the middle and a key in a bell, that adds to the more likelihood that uh, this will go higher. And uh, so... With that in mind, I'm going to just pull up that success checklist. And uh, while we're doing that, uh, questions. All right, chats. People want to look at zero and Litecoin. Litecoin certainly a good one to look at. Zero. Uh, thoughts on political interference with Crypto Canada USA. So you know what, Alex? Well, um, a private. Uh, let's talk about that tomorrow in the Active Trader class. This Crypto Mastery is really more news and the indicators, but I'm happy to to do that. And let's see. Okay. So let's, uh, first things first, I want to jump over, just finish that thought. And I need to do that off screen on another monitor. So basically the uh, checklist, which is trading such check crypto checklist here. And uh, here it is. Here you go. Here, I'll show it to you guys. So if you're watching this and you'd like a copy of this, you can just let us know or join us next week uh, for this. And um, uh, let's see, if you'd like to sign up for these classes every week, by the way, uh, we'll give you a uh, link to do that. Okay, so this is that checklist I was talking about. And uh, so is there an ERI showing a green up arrow? That would be the first sign that you want to get into or consider the uh, trade. And let's see, for some reason, this one's not working though for me, Myrene. It's uh, my button's not working. Uh, maybe I need to download it. And um, I've got various versions of this. And this one's not working. So uh, anyway, you guys, you understand that we have an interactive version where you can actually physically check that off. Puts a uh, little green check. So are there multiple green arrows, early reversal indicator? If yes, uh, is the TSI green and above the 20 line? You've heard me talk about that. And um, then is the signal line turned from red to green, which is what I just talked about down here. And then the trend indicator, is there, is there a bell, which is our buy, is an indicator have a green midline along here. So these are all these checkoffs. The more checks you have, then it gives you a score down below at the bottom of the page. So that's how that uh, is designed. And uh, I think uh, the downloadable version will do that. So just let me know. There we go. That's how it works. I knew that worked. So each time you get a green check on that, it gives you a bigger score. And if you have a score of, uh, say, four or more, then I'm legging into these trades. This is three out of 19. And uh, so in terms of jumping back over to the uh, charts, we wanted to look at that. We had you know, one here, one here, one here. So this, this is an older ERI, but I would certainly say the TSI is going above green. Okay, so we would say, I would say yes on the TSI as the signal line turned from red to green. Signal line is our third proprietary indicator here, yes. So the signals come down. I love it when it comes down oversold and then goes up, it goes up like that into green. And then, so we only have two there, right? So that was not, not enough to make a trade on that. Uh, there are other indicators like, so we looked at uh, that other one where we're getting a key and a bell and that would be yes, if it was turning into a bell, as I suggested, we could be seeing 
on the Ethereum chart. So with that, why don't we take a look at, um, uh, let's see, Dero, is that what you want to see? Uh, that, let's see, Dero. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. So, <clears throat> yeah. so let's see, what do we have here? We've got some... Um, not much going on. I mean, I don't do I, there's the, the ERI. We want to see a fresh ERI. I think this looks it looks bearish to me. I mean, we don't have the this is not turning higher. Sometimes if you see nice velocity on our trend strength indicator and it's shooting up like that, I'm sometimes we'll front run it if if I have an ERI before that. So if we go back over here, uh, this was a good signal early reversal early reversal indicator and uh then we had the tsi going straight vertically and higher that's when you kind of can tell this is going to go higher and sure enough and then we had the signal then we had the bell and that was a great time to get into this dero trade uh but we don't we did not have that scenario setting up here not currently so that was a nice trade on this uh, uh dero which i'm not familiar with but uh this is we don't have an ERI, we don't have a TSI green, we have a signal green but going flat. We really want to look for that slope, that big upswing. So I'm not bullish on this, and also not have this is red line. So uh, this is not bullish uh, here. I don't uh, see. Let's see if there's a support zone nearby. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's nothing, there's no real reason to buy this by Dero. I'm looking at the midpoint of this candle as a possible support level, but really that's not enough, you guys. And so I would say uh, watch out for Dero. More than likely, it would be better entry, look for support around $5. I think this drifts down into the $5 range. Very low volume, volume's decreasing. So uh, this isn't one that I'd be um, uh, super excited about. Uh, sorry if that's uh, not what you wanted to hear. Um, let's see. And. Um, Litecoin. That's right. So let's pull up Litecoin. I don't know what that's. I got to uninstall this. So Litecoin. Uh, if we jump over on this other watch list here, I've got this. I've got. Uh, okay, Litecoin. Yeah. So Litecoin. You know, this has been in this nice upward trending channel for some time. And uh, so what uh, they have also started releasing their own ordinals. So there's some use case, but I mean, as long as it's in this upward trending zone, it's bullish, not, not tremendously bullish, but um, you know, the time to buy Litecoin in dollar cost average or along this lower edge of this trend, uh, upward trend line, when it hits and shows an early reversal indicator these green arrows okay so that's what we want to watch for it it's seemed to be losing some steam but it has been a nice solid performer over time so the question here that i'd be looking at though if we turn off some of these other indicators is where would it likely run out of steam you know these things do run out of steam and so with the uh, fibonacci on let's look at that uh, I would want to see likely areas of it would retrace to and then stall. So, you know, I mean, the um, I, I could see it go to 170, right, up in this region here. It's going to hit some resistance back in here, but you have different levels. I just think Litecoin in long term is probably a good project to own long term uh, as part of your portfolio. Not financial advice, but uh, look at this nice, solid uptrending uh, trend channel there. So that's what I see there. Uh, let's see. Um, and uh, private message from Jay. I, I don't, um, but I'll check it out. I uh, haven't seen that show. Pol if thoughts on political interference with crypto are coming right up to the hour. Um, a political interference with crypto. I, I don't know. It's a really, it's a tough one. I know they're, we're at risk of driving crypto offshore. And, um, you know, but some. Um, Where's that Janet uh, Yellen? I think I put it, uh, unpacked it, put it away. But we are seeing th this scenario potentially playing out. And um, I didn't talk about the 50K Bitcoin. The, hang on a second, let me clean this up a little bit. We're holding above that 200 week uh, EMA, which is good. So this is bullish here on the uh, weekly for Bitcoin. 
short term. I still think we pull back to this 25,300 level as shown, but um, I do have the note here, watch for the weekly to hold above the weekly EMA. Uh, in terms of that bounce level though, which chart did I have it on? Uh, it's a Fibonacci retracement back. I've got a lot of charts open. I'm going to create some specific charts for this uh, to mastery class. So it's not overlapping, but, um, but here, this is the Fibonacci retracement that I drew from the market cycle high market cycle low puts us on a golden pocket retracement right up to 48 K. So I think that, you know, this pullback, we likely see again, we have further pullback in this 25 K 26 K region. And then June, July, August, I think we, we could push up strongly to this 48 K region. I reserve the right to be wrong, however, and we did look at this 21,000 uh, if things were to break down on head and shoulders, even down to like that 17,000 level, which is another scenario I've, I've drawn here. So we just have to wait and see. We had four months pushing higher hit rejections and resistance at 32K. This is currently a weekly bear, monthly bearish engulfing candle too. So it's going to be interesting to see uh, if if that follows through then, or if next month, June pushes higher. And there's really no way to know with so much uncertainty, which is, as we know, the only thing certain in these markets is uncertainty. All right, uh, let's see. Uh, any uh, thoughts here? A couple people say that uh, they agree with this scenario, you know, so if um, if you'd like to look up this scenario and follow along, you can just uh, Google, sorry, Google Brett Fogel on TradingView and um, see this scenario, the path to 100K Bitcoin. And uh, so far, it's playing out as I sort of proposed here. It's pulling back to that moving average. And then what remains to be seen is if we launch off higher with the three factors that I've mentioned, the hyperinflation and de-dollarization of the dollar, QE money printing to pay down U.S. debt. If we start printing the trillion dollar coins and sticking them uh, in the reserve to sort of pay down our own debt, printing money to pay down our own debt, and then bank failures, further bank failures, bank runs and transfers into Bitcoin and gold. So do I think this is likely? No, but I'm, I'm suggesting a 10, maybe 20% scenario possibility here uh, because it's so unlikely because it's not the consensus had a lot of conversations this past weekend about consensus and how dangerous that is so um you may want to follow this uh, and there's some other you know I do have uh, periodic updates here on the uh, channel here in trading view if you want to check that out all right guys uh let's see um yeah jay uh sounds good well thanks for showing up everyone that's all we have time for and again, like if you like the content here, please like. Uh, it really helps kind of get the word out. We're a small channel looking to grow, and we'll be doing more of these and looking to get into live shows here in the uh, coming year. So anyway, you guys, thanks for showing up here. Give you a quick wave. This is Brett from Moonstream Crypto and Crypto Mastery. And uh, we look forward to talking to you again next week. Take care, everyone.